Episode 17, Old Flames, Old Wounds. We begin at Cloud Tower, where the Winks have a group therapy session with Felomoda. In case you don't remember, Felomoda is created by Nutalia, who's been helping with the Ray Rite, and also is a psychologist who helped out the Winks back at the Golden Auditorium. When Tecna asks about diagnoses and individual sessions, Felomoda explains that she needs to get to know the Winks as people before they continue, so as to better understand them and their personalities and problems. And given how the Winks all seem joined at the hip, she felt assessing their group dynamic would be a good starting point. Aisha jokes about how that seems fitting. Felimona asks Aisha what she means, and Aisha explains how even after they all reunited, it has still felt the same, getting dragged around on life-threatening missions. Musa says that she hasn't minded this given it was to bring them all back together, and Tecna mentions how Bloom was right about the tricks targeting each of them. Stella says that they should be going after the tricks right now. Flora says there's no way they would be able to stop them until they all learn how to work together again. Not to mention, they still have to get the hang of their Ardorix powers. As the girls argue, Roxy notices Bloom staying quiet, and we get a glimpse of Bloom thinking about the encounter with Selena as she tries to remember the details of their friendship. As she starts to recall the forest of flowers, a dark figure flashes in her mind, and Bloom holds her head in pain. The others ask if she's okay, and Bloom brushes it off, saying it's just a headache. Felimona asks Bloom if there's anything she'd like to talk about. Bloom says there isn't, but Tecna mentions how they ought to try and figure out what item of hers the tricks would be after something she has a strong emotional attachment to. As she thinks, Dark Bloom flashes in her mind, and again, Bloom says she can't think of anything, visibly annoying the others. Felimoda asks Bloom if she's afraid to talk about something, reminding her that this is a safe place to speak. Bloom can't bring herself to talk, and Felimoda simply says that it's okay if she's not ready. Sometimes we need time with ourselves to sort through our feelings. However, she does advise Bloom to pay attention to how she feels, and to think about why she might be feeling a certain way. And most importantly, not to feel guilty for her emotions. After the session ends, Aisha asks Musa if she can get a read on Bloom from her powers. Musa confirms that she can, but it's not her place to say. She doesn't want to radio everyone's private emotions for everyone to hear but we do get the vibe it's not great. Stella tries to guess how Bloom is feeling, but when it's clear she's uncomfortable, Flora stops her, saying that they need to give Bloom some time. They stop as Livy, the pixie of messages, flies up to them with a super top secret letter, which Bloom reveals is from Lady Samara, Skye's mother. Something's up on Arachleon, and she needs the Winx's help. Bloom is obviously dreading the prospect, while Stella's hoping to talk to Skye, or Brandon, admitting how confusing this whole name change thing is. At the corrupted Alfia, meanwhile, Selena practices her dark magic with Icy. Icy asks Selena where she got the legendarium from, to which Selena nervously explains she stole it from the Museum of Magic. Icy is curious, though, as Selena seems to have a familiarity with the Legendarium that goes back much further. Selena justifies this as her reliance on the book for her power. Without it, she would be nothing. Icy ain't having that, saying a tool is only as good as the witch who uses it. Clearly, Selena has enough of her own power and talent to wield the Legendarium with confidence. If anything, the number of times the creatures it calls forth have turned on her make Icy believe Selena would be far more proficient relying on her own magic rather than some dusty old book. Selena isn't sure of what to say, and thankfully for her, Darcy and Stormy call them inside. The locator spell has picked up their next target, which surprisingly isn't on Earth or Domino, but rather Iraklion. We don't see what they're after this time, but the tricks clearly aren't too keen on this, and note how different this mission will be. Selena has an idea, however, and says if anyone can get close to Bloom for this, it's her. Icy's clearly worried, but remains silent. We cut to the Arachleon Royal Palace as the Winx arrive. Bloom is tense, and the other Winx pick up on that. Roxy's not sure what could be freaking her out this much, 
and when Stella tries to tease the answer out of her, they stop as Brandon calls out to them, approaching from the opposite direction alongside Skye. Everyone is awkwardly quiet and Bloom is low-key ready to vomit. Skye says he's heard about everything going on, but has been too busy to check in on Bloom and her friends. The others are confused as to how the King of Arachleon knows them, and it gets a bit more awkward when the guys realize Bloom hasn't filled them in on certain parts of she and Skye's past since they lost their memories. In any case, Skye and Brandon have to tend to something, but Skye says that if there's any way for him to help, to let him know. Brandon also asks Stella if they could catch up later, to which Stella says she thinks Bloom will need her for the time being. They head inside, though Stella insists they not push the details out of Bloom until she's ready to share. But now they begin to start feeling for Bloom, finally. Perhaps she's not as put together as she's often tried to make herself seem. They meet with Samara in the throne room, who's just gotten out of a meeting with the nobles that Skye was happy to race out of the moment it ended. She shares that Skye has been acting strangely in recent months, never in the palace unless his duties require it, and actively avoiding her whenever he can and keeping conversations brief. This behavior has picked up since the tricks conquered Elfia. Given Skye has been influenced by dark forces before, Samara fears that history is repeating itself and asks the Wings to investigate discreetly. They're not sure, but Tegna thinks there's a chance this could indeed be another scheme of the tricks. Bloom is hesitant, but the Wings all agree to look into the matter. Afterwards, the Winks head outside and talk amongst themselves about what could be up with Skye, from him being controlled by the tricks to a possible affair. Cue a joke where Roxy goes, with who, Brandon? And Stella responds, if that were true, I would just be bitter I was not invited. Flora's not sure if this is their place to pry on someone else's business. Tecna says that statistically, it's better to check whether the tricks are involved for everyone's safety, especially Skye's. As the Winks discuss, we see Selena hiding out in the gardens near them. She talks to herself, saying that to draw what she needs out of Bloom, she just needs a bit more despair and she has the perfect idea on how to stoke that flame. With her moon magic, she transforms into her alter ego of Venomia, infamous tabloid writer and vehement Winx critic. She approaches the Winx, and Venomia comments on how she is surprised to find Bloom on Arachleon, since she and Skye have been broken up after their failed wedding attempt. In any case, Venomia got a tip from an anonymous source about what Skye's been up to, asking if Bloom knows anything. Immediately, Roxy steps in, saying they're just as in the dark as Venomia, and she'd be better off doing her own research on her own time. Venomia takes the hint and walks off, but Bloom stops her, saying, I'm still not sure why you hate me, but whatever I did, I'm sorry. That really makes Venomia pause, but she leaves without another word. Not needing to speak, the other Winks direct Bloom's focus into finding Skye. Flora uses her nature powers to speak with the forest around the castle, but apparently it's unwilling to share the secret. Tecna has another idea, but she's going to need Musa. Musa unleashes her sound waves all around, which Tecna analyzes to turn into a map to calculate Skye and Brandon's location, which points them to an abandoned quarry in the nearby Crystal Mountains. Once they arrive, they're certain something shady must be going on, catching a glimpse of Brandon keeping watch while Skye enters a cave at the bottom. Roxy has an idea on how to distract Brandon. Using her powers, she guides them to a gemlin, a fairy animal akin to a gopher who digs through the earth and eats crystal. Befriending the gemlin, Roxy convinces him and his friends to give Brandon a little scare. Brandon hears something behind him, then finds himself playing whack a gemlin as they surround him, popping in and out from the ground. Aisha uses her magic to create a mist from the nearby pool to give themselves some cover. Brandon, however, does sense them rush by into the cave, and Stella stops him, revealing herself and saying he's got a lot to answer for, to which the gemlin snicker. Inside the cavern, Musa uses her powers to pick up on the echoes of Skye's voice. She does hear a woman talking to him, but it's not the tricks. Turning a corner, they see Skye holding a woman's hands, Diospro. Bloom is shocked, and when Diospro hands Skye a bouquet, Bloom instinctively remembers the potion she gave him way back when and yells no, while burning the bouquet with her magic. Skye and Diaspro are shocked as Bloom reveals herself, with the other Winks confused as to what she's doing. Skye demands to know what they're doing and why they followed him. Bloom ignores him, telling Diaspro that her scheme with the tricks isn't going to work, to which Tecna breaks the news that there are no traces of dark magic in the bouquet's ashes. 
To cut through the tension, Diaspora suggests that they all talk this out. We cut to a bit later where Brandon and Stella have caught up with everyone else. Diaspora explains that after she finished her sentence at Light Rock Monastery, she didn't want to return to Arachleon not only because of her banishment, but because she genuinely wanted a fresh start. And so she moved to the planet of Ohm to learn of their magical meditation techniques. And lo and behold, Sky had also been visiting Ohm to do the exact same thing, to learn how to move on after surviving that whole Infinite Ocean debacle. They then began talking about their experiences and from there developed a strong friendship which then escalated into a relationship. They don't want to hide it, but they also know that not only would Skye's mother not approve, but the tabloids would run wild with the story and spin it into a scandal. The Winks aren't sure what to say, but they do agree to keep this from Samara for the time being. As a thanks, Skye invites them to a party he's hosting at the palace that night, and the Winks figure they might as well use this as a chance to relax though Bloom is silently dying inside. We then see that Selena has been eavesdropping on this conversation. She's confused as to why she feels so upset for Bloom, to which Asheron reveals himself from the Legendarium, saying it's because she's still letting Bloom control her. He suggests taking this chance to push Bloom over the edge of the party, and he has the perfect idea for what she can summon, an entity with equal but opposite power to her dragon flame. Selina is clearly nervous about this, but when Ashron asks if Selina is determined to become the Witch Queen, he tells her that this is her only chance. Otherwise, he will have no choice but to take away the magic that he's given her. Back at the palace, the Winks get ready for the party, warding off Samara by saying they need more time to gather information, with a joke from Stella that this party will be strictly serious business. Bloom has caught them up on her tumultuous past with Skye, which makes them understand why she's been reacting so harshly to them all losing their memories. Perhaps if she had simply told them, they could have navigated all this more effectively. In any case, they're here for each other now, and they're gonna have a damn good night. But first, a montage of Stella designing fabulous gowns for them all, set to famous girls, because we deserve nice things. The Winks are pleased to see the rest of the specialists and Naboo at the party. That joy doesn't last long after the party begins, though, as Skye gets everyone's attention to make an announcement. He is tired of hiding part of his life, and knows sooner or later it will become public knowledge anyhow. Bloom knows what's coming and the Winks gather around her, with Roxy and Stella gripping her hands, while Venomia, nestled within the crowd, sneers. Skye welcomes Diaspro onto the dance floor, announcing their relationship, to which the crowd gasps and murmurs. Samara, visibly upset, tries to pull Skye aside and talk to him. The Winks aren't sure what to do, but Bloom says she needs to be alone for a moment and heads outside, with Venomia slipping through the crowd to follow her. Brandon approaches Stella, trying to explain himself. Stella says she has been friends with both Skye and Brandon for years, and is hurt that Brandon hasn't told her the truth. To which Brandon says he wanted to tell her. Stella asks if it's because she has a big mouth, which wouldn't surprise the other Winks. But Brandon says it's because he didn't want to burden her. This started way before the Winks lost their memories, and Brandon knew how much it would kill Stella to have to hide something like this from her best friend. Stella nods, forgiving Brandon, and confirming that even if he is just a squire, she's still over the moon for him. Cue the Winks groaning in pain. The other Winks are still uncertain about Diospero. Flora speaks to the forest again, and the trees confirm they were just trying to protect Sky and Diospero, and there's no dark magic involved there. However, they do warn Flora about another evil present. And in a chilling moment, Flora says that it was no coincidence they ran into Venomia, and they need to find Bloom right now. We cut outside where Bloom, alone in the garden, cries. She knows it's been over with Skye for so long, but seeing her prince with someone else still hurts like nothing else. Venomia's voice calls out, I take it reality finally hit you? Bloom turns to see Venomia. She asks if Venomia is here to get a quote for an article all about King Skye's new girlfriend, but Venomia doesn't answer. Instead, she says she does feel strangely sorry for Bloom, which is unexpected given this is exactly what Bloom put her through many years ago. Bloom is confused only to be ensnared by a poser hex spell, locking her in place. Venomia explains she got that one from Darcy, then reveals herself as Selina. Bloom is shocked, but before she can say anything, Selina uses a spell from the Legendarium to unleash the darkness within Bloom. A purple spark of the dragon flame is ripped from Bloom's chest, 
All the while, Bloom can see a vision of dark Bloom screaming in pain. Bloom falls incredibly weak, pale, and sickly. Selena assures Bloom they'll see each other again very soon, but before she heads out, she's going to leave a parting gift. The other wings, Sky, Brandon, and Diaspora run out and spot the scene, charging Selena. Before they can reach her, Selena reads a passage from the Legendarium about a mighty shadow phoenix whose flame burns as black as the abyss from whence it rose. Through your true name and the fire of your evil, Equal, I invoke you, Lord Darkar. Shadows quickly spread across the castle, and as the winks help Bloom up, they hear a bone-chilling laughter, making them all, especially Bloom and Aisha, terrified. Razor-sharp claws tear through the mist, and bright crimson eyes peer through the haze. Introducing himself as the Prince of Darkness, and announcing how pleasant it is to see the winks after so long, Lord Darkar steps forth, cackling. Episode 18, The Dragon and the Phoenix. We begin right where we left off, with the shadows around the Arachleon Palace dissipating as everyone flees. In the garden, the Winx and Specialists surround Lord Darkar, who stands beside Selina. He thanks Selina for freeing him, and says in exchange for his gratitude, he will allow her to leave here alive. He eerily tells Selina to give the tricks his regards. She glances at Bloom quickly, clearly unsure of her actions, before teleporting away. Darkar then turns his attention to the Winx. Though his return was thanks to the Legendarium, he asserts that his essence is always present, slowly gathering until a new age of darkness can begin. Selina merely accelerated the process. In any case, Darkar pities Bloom, the wielder of the mighty dragon flame reduced to such a pathetic shell. He then summons a horde of shadow monsters, which no one is happy to see return, especially given they're much stronger than they used to be. Bloom is barely able to stand, and Diospro takes her off to the side to protect her, while the other winks transform to handle Darkar and his monsters, with the help of the specialists and Naboo. Though the Arachlean Royal Guards pitch in to help, Darkar is able to handle all of them with ease, much like their last fight in Relix. The Winx's Ardoric powers keep them on par, but Darkar is able to sense the Winx's connection to the Dragon Flame, and uses that to subtly manifest their fears and insecurities to throw them off during the fight. Bloom, meanwhile, doesn't have the strength to transform, explaining to Diaspora that part of the flame was torn out of her. Briefly, she hears a friendly, familiar voice call out to her, telling her to remember the power of the dragon is always with her. Cutting back to the fight, Aisha and Stella are the ones coordinating everyone's attacks, given they've had the most experience fighting Darkar, which is somehow naturally returning to them. Darkar is impressed by their skill, but notes they haven't even scratched the surface of the great dragon's magic. The Winx attempt to use convergence only for it to backfire on them. Bloom impulsively moves to try and protect her friends, only to nearly fall as Diaspora catches her. Turning his attention to them, Darkar makes it clear that he's after Bloom, darting right for her. Diaspora shields them with a gem barrier, only for the barrier to break as Darkar sends them both flying back. Darkar mentions how what the Winx did tore his very being apart, and now he's hoping to return the favor. Darkar slashes only for Sky to block with his sword. Frustrated, Darkar quickly knocks Sky back as well, but stops as the Winx surround him, preparing to unleash another convergence spell. Before they can even try, Darkar mutters about not being at full strength and needing a different approach. Quickly, he shifts into his Phoenix form, dodging the attack and leaving the Winx to be pushed back by the force of their own spell. Darkar then grabs Sky, and the shadow monsters follow as he flies off, leaving everyone exhausted and dazed. Back at Elfia, Selina returns with a dark dragon flame spark, and is immediately greeted by the irate Trix, demanding to know why Selina summoned, of all things, Lord Darkar. She defends her actions, saying that it was needed to hold back the Winx. The spark begins to flicker wildly. The Trix summoned their Whispering Crystals, using the vacuum spell to hold onto the spark. They head off to secure it, but they warn Selina that they're not done talking about this. Back on Arachleon, everyone recovers and assesses the situation. Samara and Diaspora are worried about Sky, and Brandon has no idea why Darkar would kidnap him, but 
Bloom does. She's connected to him given their powers are natural opposites. And the only goal of the Shadow Phoenix is to slay the Great Dragon and return the universe to the Void. Basically, he will never stop until he has eliminated Bloom and the Winx and absorbed the Dragon Flame. Darkar likely thinks Sky is the perfect bait to have an advantage over Bloom. She's also able to sense that he's at the quarry, but she can't tell whether Sky is okay. Assessing the geography, Techno determines that they won't be able to just barge in without Darkar having the high ground metaphorically speaking. Bloom suggests going alone and handing herself over to appease him, but the others aren't having any of that. That's when Stella gets an idea involving her moon magic. Unfortunately for them, Kerbog, Darkar's old pet and spy, is watching them. The Winx, Diospro, and Specialists arrive just outside the quarry finding the entrance guarded by shadow monsters. Putting their plan into action, Roxy communicates with the Gemlins, having them distract the shadow monsters while Aisha creates a mist to obscure their sight. The Winx and Brandon then do battle with the shadow monsters, while Bloom, Stella, and Diaspro head into the mine. They quickly come across a small chamber where they find Sky, unconscious and trapped in Shadow Tar. Before they can reach him, Darkar strikes. Bloom tries to draw his attention, but Darkar laughs, commending the fairies for their parlor tricks before he dispels the illusion, revealing that Stella had used her moon magic to switch Bloom and Diaspro's appearances. Giving himself more backup, Darkar calls upon Kerbog, who transforms into his executioner form to attack the Winx. Afterwards, he goes after Bloom, who leads Darkar deeper into the mine. Stella follows, leaving Diaspro to free Sky. Bloom's battle with Darkar leads them into a large cavern deep underground filled with crystals. Bloom still struggles to keep up, and Darkar notes how Bloom seems even weaker than she was all those years ago. Bloom bites back about how weak Darkar must be to rely on a hostage situation, to which Darkar says he can sense the turmoil in Bloom's heart through their connection, memories she has suppressed even unknowingly, because she's too weak to face them. Be it the false Avalon Darkar used to manipulate her and tell her what she wanted to hear, or a best friend who grew tired of living in Bloom's shadow. All this makes it even harder for Bloom to fight back, leaving her unable to focus on protecting against Darkar's attacks. He repeats over and over again how she's not the hero she believes that she was, and asks why bother fighting if no one will miss you. Stella tries to help, but Darkar easily removes her from the battle by trapping her in her own worst fears, that being her father disowning her after her embracing her Selenian heritage. Cutting back to Diaspora, we see the shadow monsters entering the chamber preparing to attack her along with Kerbog. Thankfully, the Winx and Specialists aren't far behind, knocking the monsters back and freeing Sky with their fairy dust. Diaspora insists that Bloom and Stella will need backup more, and so the Winx go to help them while the Specialists stay with Diaspora. Sky starts to stir, and thankfully he seems to be okay. The Specialists, however, are quickly knocked out. Immediately, Diaspora leaps to protect Brandon, only for Kerbog's axe swing to shatter her shield and knock her out as well. As Sky cries out for her, Diaspora begins to glow, and then transforms into Enchantix. With her new magic, Diaspora uses her enhanced gemstone powers to encase Kerbog in amber, which then breaks, destroying him. Down in the chamber, Darkar prepares to attack a vulnerable Bloom. Thankfully, the other Winx arrive in time to hold him off, which royally pisses Darkar off. Channeling his power, he transforms into his phoenix form, releasing a spell that traps all of the Winx, save for Bloom, in the same nightmare trap as Stella. Darkar then addresses Bloom, saying how he savors her despair, and has decided to eliminate her friends one by one before he destroys her. He decides on Stella first, and this really sets Bloom off. As Darkar unleashes his dark flames at Stella, Bloom leaps in the way, screaming in pain but still withstanding the attack. During this, Bloom hears that familiar voice again, and we fade into her mindscape as Buddy the Dragon appears before her. Buddy explains that Bloom's suppression of her own feelings and reluctance to face her problems head-on has weakened her connection to the Dragon Flame and to herself. But more importantly, she has forgotten her own value and forgotten how to love herself. 
All of this has made her susceptible to having part of the flames stolen by Selena. Bloom says that she can't remember much about her, to which Buddy explains that the memory is still there. It's simply suppressed, partially through magic, but also through Bloom's unconscious fear of the feelings associated with those memories. Bloom hesitates, then says she wants to face the truth no matter how difficult. She knows she's made mistakes and she's hurt people she loves, but she wants to make amends. She wants to atone and she's tired of hating herself. She wants to be happy. Buddy nods, then gestures to a window in which we see the full memory of the teenage Bloom and Selena meeting Eldora. And this time, we see the fairy godmother's face. Bloom starts to recall this as the forest of flowers, and that Eldora was their fairy godmother. She doesn't remember why she forgot all of this, but she's determined to get to the bottom of the mystery and face Selena. And with that, Buddy returns to Bloom. She wraps herself in a blue flame, and she transforms. With Ardorix, Bloom manages to push Lord Darkar back. Her flame is still incomplete, but now with a rekindled connection to the dragon flame, she's able to free the other winks. And together, they unleash a rainbow-colored flame that destroys Darkar. A small spark of his shadow fire remains. Though the winks are afraid, Bloom walks up to it, takes it into her hand, and places it into her fairy dust bottle. We cut to outside the mine, where everyone is recovering from the battle. Bloom congratulates Diaspora on earning her enchantix, and apologizes for everything that she's done over the years, and for her reaction to her and Skye's relationship. Queen Samara arrives shortly thereafter, and is grateful for Skye's safety. Bloom takes the opportunity to make the case for Diaspora's change of heart, and Brandon backs it up, given that she saved his life. Though Samara makes it clear she's going to be keeping an eye on Diaspora, if she and Sky are happy together, then that's good enough for her. The Winks then discuss the situation with the Trix and Selena. They're not sure what will happen next, but Bloom says that they will need to get to the root of how she and Selena fell out, and what happened to their fairy godmother Eldora. Finding those answers may prove difficult, and will almost certainly reopen old wounds, but Bloom is determined to set things right, and the Winks agree to stand by her side. We then cut to Selena's room in Elfia, where she stares out the window, pondering her decisions and thinking back on her friendship with Bloom. She wishes things had played out differently, even if she believes becoming Witch Queen will give her the power to change everything. This, however, makes her think of how much she's learned from the tricks and dread the inevitable fallout once they learn the truth. She looks to her hands and removes her left glove, revealing burn scars along her hand and lower arm. Instinctively, she tells Eldora that she didn't call for her, but as the fairy godmother appears behind her, Eldora says she didn't need to. Tearing up, Selena actively hides her crying and says she has a few questions for the fairy godmother. <laughs> 